Hello, Jackson Knights, and welcome back to my movie collection video series. Um, part of my voice, I'm getting over a cold, um, but I really didn't want to not do a video this weekend, so thankfully I'm over the hill and over the worst of it. So uh, now that all my franchises have been taken care of, uh, for this entire video, I'm going to be doing... All of my standalone movies. There's a lot, so this might take a little while. So, right off the bat, let's uh, crack open the sponsor. Oh, that's good. Ah. And let's jump right into it. And uh, I have all of my standalone movies in alphabetical order. So, uh, yeah, let's get on with it. Starting off with the first one here, we have The Adventures of Milo and Otis. Uh, I love this movie. My mom got me this when I was really young. And uh, it's just a very cute, sweet, adorable movie. If you like uh, pugs and orange kitties, as I do. Not pugs, though. Meadow likes pugs, though. Right, hon? What? Pugs. What about it? Don't you like pugs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she likes pugs. I don't. I'll wipe my ass with pugs. Rude. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, this is a cute movie. This is actually a Japanese movie. Uh, that this is the American cut of that Japanese film. I've never seen the Japanese cut, though. Yeah, this is a cute movie. Good movie for kids. Alita Battle Angel, one of the best movies of 2019 and one of the most underrated movies of 2019. I would really like to see at least two sequels to this movie, but it's been five years, and unlikely that's ever going to happen. American Ultra, um, a fairly entertaining but um, kind of an unremarkable. Um, oh, that's what I'm smelling. Okay, uh, action movie. Although Jesse Eisenberg gives a good, pretty good performance, and wow, Kristen Stewart can actually act because she's not bad in this either. Um, if I didn't know any better, I'd swear they're a brother and sister. <laughs> uh, Anna and the Apocalypse, a zombie comedy Christmas musical. And it's awesome. <laughs> uh, this is a very entertaining movie. It literally is. It's a zombie comedy that's also a musical that takes place on Christmas Eve. It's quite entertaining. And it's actually got some pretty decent songs. And it's surprisingly gory, too. And it has a surprisingly, uh, like, heartfelt, sad ending. Anaconda. I am actually a pretty big fan of this movie. I think it's a pretty underrated 90s uh, creature feature with uh, a pretty decent cast. Uh, I've never... I've seen the second movie, um, The Hunt for the Blood Orchid. I used to own it, but it got too damaged. I have to get my hands on that. And I am aware that it had a crossover with Lake Placid, of all fucking things. <laughs> Never seen that. An American Werewolf in London, the greatest werewolf movie of all time. Great movie. Anna, this is an, a spy action movie from 2019 with uh, Killian Murphy. Um, not bad. Um, feels a bit generic, especially... This came out around the same time as John Wick 3, and uh, I think that definitely had an effect on its performance, but it's got some decent twists and turns. Ants, one of my favorite animated movies, um, and definitely one of my favorite um, DreamWorks films. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. Aquaman, King of Atlantis. Uh, this is that three-part animated special that aired on Cartoon Network that is technically 
it is, but it's also not canon with the DCEU. It makes references to Aquaman 2018, but it's not considered to be part of the larger DC Extended Universe. Um, I didn't much care for this movie. Um, I don't like the animation style or the humor. It's very similar to like Adventure Time or the regular show. But I bought this mainly just because it was about to be Batgirled. Like, it was being taken off every streaming service, and there was only, like, a, a scant amount of um, DVDs and Blu-rays that were being released before it was being shelved and stored away for all eternity. So, I got my hands on this simply just because I don't believe in that process whatsoever. I think it's a crime damn shame uh, that can happen to uh, people's property that they put their hearts... Uh, heart and soul into and maybe some other time in the future i'll give this another try but yeah i just got this for re rebellious reasons <laughs> uh atragon i have not seen this movie since 2018 nor do i really intend to avengement a pretty good prison martial arts movie it's got some really gnarly fight scenes and some Scott Atkins gets his ass kicked pretty gnarly in uh, this movie. He gets literally curb stomped into a flight of stairs. Oof. The Banana Splits movie. Uh, I thought this was okay. Meadow thought it was scarier than I did. I actually got her with a pretty good jump scare <laughs> uh, with this movie. But I, I didn't. I didn't love this movie, but I just thought it was okay. I liked uh, Willy's Wonderland a lot more, honestly. But it did have some pretty decent kills. Part of my nose. Not yet. But thank you. Uh, the Battery. A very low budget. Low, low budget. This movie cost $6,000. In some ways, it shows, but I think this is also a very underrated uh, zombie movie. Uh, the main focus of it is that it's a character study. It's it's focusing on these two guys surviving the apocalypse, but also surviving each other. It's very, very entertaining. Very well made, despite its low budget. Battle in Outer Space, the kind of, sort of, not really sequel to The Mysterians. Um, it's decent. It's got decent effects, but it's kind of one of Toho's more generic movies with a very generic title, Battle in Outer Space. Um, The Batman 2022. I thought it was okay. You're, you're still speaking to somebody who's very anti-Batman, but I thought this was okay. Um surprisingly edward from twilight did a decent job as batman <laughs> um not much to say i do look forward to the sequel batman and harley quinn i dig the shit out of this movie it's it's really funny uh the animation is really good there's a nice swamp thing cameo at the very end and uh, kevin conroy gives a good performance as batman yeah i like this movie Batman the Killing Joke, I do not like this movie at all. It's boring, it's dull, it's slow, um, it's mean-spirited and nihilistic as fuck. No thank you. And this did not need to be the very first R-rated um, animated DC movie. Batman versus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I've always, like resisted the idea of Batman and the Ninja Turtles crossing over. I've always liked the idea of the Ninja Turtles teaming up with the Teen Titans much better. But this movie wasn't bad. Uh, it's got some good animation. It's got some fun action scenes. Um, and when Batman's not on screen, the Turtles mix with Batman lore quite strongly, in my opinion. 
Batman The Dark Knight Returns, my favorite Batman film of all time. This is a, a spectacular fucking movie. Said it before, it's a better Batman versus Superman movie than the actual Batman versus Superman movie. Uh, Baywatch, the 2017 movie with The Rock. I love this movie. This is one of my favorite comedies. It's hysterical as fuck. Dude, you just tickled another, a dead man's taint. <laughs> um, yeah, this movie is hysterical. It's a shame that I guess they were kicking around the idea of a sequel for a while, but it's been almost seven years since this came out, so I don't think that's happening. Um, Beast from 2022. Um, very generic Killer Lion movie uh, with Idris Elba giving a pretty decent performance. Meh. Uh, the Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Not a bad film. This just kind of meh. I, I, similar to King Kong, there's other giant monster movies that I like way more than this. Steven Seagal's Belly of the Beast. In my opinion, this was Steven Seagal's last really good movie. Um, yeah, it's one of his direct-to-video movies. Uh, but this movie's violent. It's got some gnarly kills, some good fight scenes. It's got some pretty touchy subject matter. This is pretty damn good, in my opinion, for a direct, especially for a direct-to-video movie. Okay, I think I do need tissues. Bicentennial Man with Robin Williams. Hands down, one of my favorites of his films. And is like one of his top five most underrated movies of his entire filmography. I even got Meadow to like this movie. When did we watch Bicentennial Man when you were pregnant? Probably, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no kidding. I have to watch that again this year. Okay. Uh, the Big Boss, Bruce Lee's first, like, big movie. Like, the this was one that this was the movie that made him really famous in China. Like his first really big hit after years and years and years and years of having the door slammed in his face. Hold on, people. I was really hoping to not do this on camera. Uh, excuse me. This is annoying. Totally riveting, I'm sure. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, next, we have Big Fish, one of my favorite films of all time. And the one goddamn Tim Burton movie that I just cannot get Meadow to watch. Two, actually. The other one I'll show in due time. But I love Big Fish. Uh, Big Mama's House, another one, one of my favorite comedies. Um, this movie is hysterical. Not counting the Bad Boys movies, this is hands down my favorite Martin Lawrence movie. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> um, the Black Phone. Uh, this was a huge pleasant surprise. I was hearing all the hype and seeing some reviews when this was coming out. And I was thinking, eh, I don't know if I'm going to like this very much. But upon viewing, I was like, oh, wow, this is actually really solid. It's not scary, really. It's pretty intense and pretty suspenseful, but I really wouldn't say it's scary. Um, 
it's not a very rewatchable film either, but that's not really a fault of the film. It's just, it's one of those movies that takes place in one location primarily. So it kind of gets stale after a while, but yeah, the black phone was a huge, pleasant surprise. Um, I kind of consider this to be an unofficial sinister three. Uh, it was directed and written by the same guys and it has a very similar feel tone and atmosphere to it. Um, even metal like this movie, right? Han. Oh yeah, Deputy So and So, not playing the same character, but oh, horror and metal is here. Yo, horror and metal channel. I probably sound more like him <laughs> since I'm recovering from a cold. And come on, you still haven't seen the Black Phone? It's like ten bucks on Amazon. Uh, the Black Scorpion. Very derivative of them from 1954, but um, still is an entertaining, uh, like, diet version of that. It's got good special effects. I really shouldn't have reviewed this for Super Kaiju Binge. Uh, Sandra Bullock's The Blind Side, one of Meadows' favorite films. I like it a lot, too. I think it's a pretty heartwarming and touchy story. Uh, the 1988 The Blob, one of the best remakes ever made. It's got some gnarly kills and amazing special effects. It's a shame it was a box office bomb. And it is a shame that Rob Zombie never got to make his uh, remake of The Blob, because that would have been really cool. Blood Quantum, a Native American zombie movie from Shudder from 2019. Not a very pleasant experience. It's got good kills, and it's pretty ballsy, and it's got some pretty good special effects, but it's got a horrendously bleak ending that I'm not a big fan of. Bloodshot, uh, Vin Diesel's superhero movie. Not bad, but should have been R-rated, for one. And... Not very much else to say. <laughs> um, like, there's potential to do more, and I think I think there are plans kicking around to make a sequel to this, but I think those might have fallen through. Blood In, Blood Out, a very underrated and underappreciated masterpiece. This is a great, 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 great movie. Blood and Bone, a pretty good low-budget um, martial arts movie with Michael J. White. It's got some really good fight scenes and some pretty fun, entertaining characters. Bone Tomahawk tends to be at the top of people who love Western horror films, but I kind of thought it was just okay. It's got a good cast, like Kurt Russell, Patrick Wilson, and Sid Haig even makes a cameo. It's got some gnarly kills and some pretty visceral fucked up scenes, but eh, I just, again, kind of thought it was just okay. Again, had a very bleak uh, ending that left a really bad taste in my mouth. Uh, next we have the Boss with Melissa McCarthy on Blu-ray. Um, kind of a more generic Melissa McCarthy comedy, but it, it is still funny. Uh, Melissa McCarthy is really good at improv, and she is pretty funny in this movie, so I'd give it a watch. It's it's not bad. Um, who's Dak Shepard's wife again? Kristen Bell. Oh, yeah, her... Her contrast with Kristen Bell is uh, is pretty good. It's one of the hearts of the movie. Uh, next, we have Braveheart, one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, this is a very violent, very visceral, but very emotional and heartfelt movie. Probably, maybe not Mel Gibson's best acting role, although it's certainly up there, but this is definitely his best directed film. 
despite how woefully historically inaccurate the film is. Um, bringing down the house, a uh, pretty good Steve Martin comedy. Um, it's got some funny, dirty jokes in it, and uh, his chemistry with I, I what is, what the hell is her name? Queen Latifah, I think. Uh, is is pretty strong. Uh, Bruce Almighty, my second favorite Jim Carrey movie. Um, fucking hysterical. It's got some really, really good jokes. Um, and Jim Carrey's chemistry with Jennifer Aniston is quite strong, too. Uh... Excuse me. Uh, Sylvester Stallone's Bullet to the Head. Um, Kind of a more generic movie in Stallone's career. I think it came out the same year as Escape Plan. But I actually like this one a little more than Escape Plan, believe it or not. It just resonates with me stronger. Um, yeah, I got some. it's got some good action scenes. Uh, Stallone's pretty entertaining. It's pretty fun to see him play an anti-villain or an anti-hero in this. But yeah, I like Bolt to the Head. And then we have 2022's Bullet Train. Um, a lot more fun and enter entertaining than I thought it would be. Um, it's got a great cast. Brad Pitt. Um, Aaron Taylor Johnson. The dude from... Uh, not to sound like this. The black guy from Godzilla vs. Kong and Child's Play 2019. Yeah. This is pretty fun, quite violent, surprisingly. Uh, it's got some good fight scenes, it's got some really good humor, um, and a stupid, pointless Ryan Reynolds cameo that needs to be cut out of the movie. <laughs> uh, Meadow's got a Ryan Reynolds boner. The Black Demon. Spoilers for an upcoming uh, Super Cinema Rank episode. This is hands down the worst movie of 2023. Black Demon was fucking awful. Boring as all living fuck. An hour and 40 minute long giant shark movie. And the giant shark itself has two minutes of screen time. Barely. Over the entire fucking film. Damn. Um... Uh, Stephen King's Cat's Eye on Blu-ray. I already talked about this. Pretty underrated uh, Stephen King movie. Candyman, the original. Um, one of my favorite horror films. Kind of low on that list. But this is a great movie. It grows on me more and more and more every time I see it. Meadow even likes it too. Right? Um... Catwoman, the Halle Berry Catwoman from 2004. Oh my god, this movie's 20 years old. Yes, oof indeed. But hilariously awful. What a perfect idea. <laughs> oh, this movie's bad, but it's hilariously bad. 10 out of 10. Central Intelligence with The Rock and Kevin Hart. This is a pretty funny movie. It's got some good jokes. It's a dick. Guy got into it with his wife last night. Ended up cutting his pecker off. <laughs> um, kind of a on on the Kevin Hart side, it's a bit more of his like toned down generic side of him. But on the Rock side, yeah, I, I love anything that The Rock is in. So, yeah, fun movie. The uh, 2000 Charlie's Angels movie with uh, Stinky Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu. Um, I say that because apparently Cameron Diaz has a bad habit of not showering. As I learned from Meadow one time. Ugh, what the fuck? Do I need to string her up in the shower and scrub her ass down with a toilet brush? Not a bad movie. It's got some fun fight scenes, but it's um, hellaciously 2000 as fuck. <laughs> but yeah, it's not a bad movie. 
I never saw the sequel, uh, Full Throttle. Well, apparently it's pretty bad. Well, then again, my definition of bad is very different from a lot of other people. So who knows? Maybe I'd get a kick out of it. <laughs> I don't have any Matthew McConaughey movies. Oh, wait, no. Yes, I do. Never mind. More on that later. Uh, Sylvester Stallone's Cliffhanger, another one of my favorite movies that has one of the most shocking opening scenes ever. If you're afraid of heights, you might want to avoid this movie. Um, Cloverfield, talked about this last year. Not a bad movie. Cocaine Bear, another one of the worst movies of 2023. I did not like this movie really at all. It's it It's too campy to be taken seriously. But it's also too humorless to be funny and entertaining. Not a good movie. Sorry, Elizabeth Banks. You, you're a good director and you're a good actress, but you, sh you should have pushed the envelope more with this movie. Cockneys versus Zombies. Uh, kind of a more generic british zombie movie that kind of feels like it's trying to channel Shaun of the dead a little bit but it's not bad it's got some decent kills and some good special effects and there are a couple funny scenes but it's not quite as funny as um Shaun of the dead speaking of zombies cooties with elijah wood a children zombie movie not bad it's got some good jokes and again some good kills Collateral Damage, uh, a little bit more of a unique Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Not a bad film by any means, but it's just kind of um, a little more on the mediocre side for Arnold's movies. Congo, I love this movie. I don't really get why people like viciously hate on Congo so much. I've seen tons and tons of people just say, yeah, some things are better off just left as books. I've never read the novel, so maybe my opinion would change if I did, but I did Congo. Uh, this is probably the goriest PG-13 movie I've ever seen in my life. Um, yeah, I like Congo. I think it's pretty entertaining. It's a fun jungle adventure movie. This is definitely not on the mediocre side of Arnold's filmography. Commando, um, you know, love this movie. One of my favorites of all time. Um, need I say more? The Count of Monte Cristo from 2002 with Jim Caviezel. Uh, I love this movie. I think it's a very underrated swashbuckler movie. Crawl. Um, not a great film. Well, not an amazing movie. But if you just want a very simple, like, one half natural disaster, one half creature feature movie. You could do a lot worse. Crawl is pretty intense and entertaining. Uh, the 2010 remake of The Crazies. I don't know what it is about this movie, um, but I just do not dig this movie. I've never seen George Romero's original, but yeah, whenever I watch this movie, like reviews of the movie make it sound a lot better than it actually is and it like every time i see one it gets me really excited and i want to go check it out but then when i watch the movie i'm just like ah this should be better this really should be more entertaining than it is i think it's the ending that really just kind of kills it for me right hon even she agrees, because we watched this on our anniversary of all days, and we were both were just like, ah, God, I wish that was better. The original Crow, I think I'm going to like the remake. I'm, I'm going to, I feel like I'm going to be living on a very tiny island in the middle of the largest ocean. Not saying the original is a bad movie. It is. It, or, or it's not. It's a great film. But I'm also excited for the remake. The remake has me very intrigued. 
All I ask is that it's R-rated, violent, and fucked up. And it looks like it's going to be achieving all of those three. So, I'm intrigued. Ah, we got two more Hammer films. Uh, the Vampire Lovers and Countess Dracula both sucked. Countess Dracula in particular I thought was a really bad movie. Uh, it's dull, it's slow, it's kind of mean-spirited, and it just feels pointless because all the characters suck. And we have to watch horrible things happen to horrible characters. No thanks. Vampire Lovers was better, but it was similarly slow and boring. At least Peter Cushing gives a good performance in it, but that's about it. I've never seen the two sequels, uh, Twins of Evil and Lust for a Vampire. Apparently, they're not that great, so I don't think I'm missing much. Um, the 2017 Chips movie? I don't give a fuck what anybody says. This movie's funny. Uh, I think it's legitimately not a great film, but it is, I think, very funny and very entertaining. You face plant in my bag. <laughs> uh dread 2012 um i love the shit out of this movie dread is awesome this should have been the 2014 remake of robocop hella uh carl urban gives a really good performance um it's violent and r-rated and over the top as fuck and as entertaining as all live in hell. It's a damn shame this didn't get a sequel. I would have loved to see like a whole new Dread franchise made just like this. That'd be awesome. But because the studio insisted on the film being released exclusively in 3D, that shot the film in the foot. Dumbasses. Uh, Dragon Slayer? not great uh the effects are good like on the dragon itself the dragon looks cool but outside of the dragon it's a very dry film no pun intended uh it feels like it's trying to cash in too much on clash of the titans because this came out the same year um clash of the titans is a way better movie um, but Dragon Slayer is just kind of meh. Not really for me. Uh, the Dark Crystal. I, movie from my childhood. I love the special effects. Uh, love the music. Love the story. Um, it's a shame it never got a sequel. I know that there was a prequel series, The Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance. But that got canceled after only one season. Fuckers. No thanks. Dark Shadows, uh, one of my favorite movies that I introduced to um, Meadow, because she loves the shit out of this movie, mostly so she can get her Johnny Depp boner on. <laughs> uh, but no, this is a legitimately funny and entertaining movie. It's one of Tim Burton's most underrated films. Uh, it's a shame that this movie bombed, because this could have been Warner Brothers' uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. With Johnny Depp. The director's cut of the 2003 Daredevil film. The director's cut is better, but this movie just is not that great, unfortunately. it's It's got some okay fight scenes, and it's not a bad Daredevil film in theory. I'm just not a big fan of Daredevil. I think Daredevil is a very overrated and unremarkable character in my opinion and this movie is trying way too hard to rip off spider-man because there's many sequences that look very very similar to spider-man zack snyder's dawn of the dead his directorial debut uh one of my favorite zombie movies maybe i'll review that this year for its 20th anniversary 
scared the shit out of me as a kid. The uh, 2008 remake of Day of the Dead. A huge guilty pleasure for myself. I'm actually a big fan of this movie. It's not a good remake of Day of the Dead. But as a zombie movie, it is still pretty entertaining. The 2018 remake of Day of the Dead. A better adaptation of Day of the Dead in concept. But it's not quite as entertaining as it should be. It just feels kind of dry. The Day After Tomorrow, a great um, uh, disaster movie. Not a big fan of disaster movies, but Day After Tomorrow is really solid. It's very well made, very intense, very suspenseful, very entertaining. Probably not my favorite Roland Emmerich film, but it's probably Roland Emmerich's best movie. Daylight's End, a vampire slash zombie movie with a <sighs> a um, Lance Henriksen cameo. Um, not bad. It's just kind of cheap, but it is entertaining. Second sponsor. Uh, the Descent, um, good scary movie, but it's not very rewatchable. It's got some really gnarly kills and some pretty spine tingling scenes. Um, especially if you got really bad claustrophobia, you'll want to avoid this movie. Deathstroke, Knights and Demons, um, R rated, uh, Deathstroke animated film. It's entertaining. It definitely earns its R rating and is a, is a pretty decent Deathstroke film. Uh, I've only seen this once. I watched it when Roman was first born, actually. Ah, remember when I was saying that Eli Roth's movies don't work for me? This is one of two exceptions. The 2018 Death Wish movie with Bruce Willis. This movie kicks ass. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. This is an entertaining as fuck hard R action movie. Very well made. It's got some gnarly ass kills. It's very gory, very violent. This is an awesome flick. Fuck all you haters. The Deadly Mantis, a uh, 1950s um, giant praying mantis movie. It's not bad. It's got. Uh, I could have told you that for free. It's just like. Let me try it. Watch me try something on camera, guys. It's called Idaho Spud. It's literally disgusting. It tastes like maple syrup. Like the marshmallow part, it tastes like maple syrup. That's so gross to me. <laughs> I spit it out immediately. It feels like ew. I'm going to see if my mom likes it. Probably not. Oh, that is bad. Mm hmm. Ugh, that is bad. Kind of, but when you mix it with coconut, it makes it intolerable. Yeah, that's not good. No, not at all. Oh my god, we have so many to go. <laughs> yeah, this will probably take a minute. Uh, Deep Star 6, um, this came out during, there was, this came out in 1989, and there was a whole bunch of undersea monster movies that came out that year. There was The Abyss, Deep Star 6, Leviathan, and like two or three other movies that had to do with underwater that came out that year. Um, aside from the abyss, this was the most successful of those. Sadly, because I like the monster in this movie looks cool, but he's only the monster is only in the last like 
40 minutes of the film. So, and I think that's a big shame, but this isn't a bad film by any means. Okay. Disturbia, a pretty good Shia LaBeouf, um, suspenseful, like, evil neighbor thriller. I thought, I thought it was pretty entertaining. Came out the same time as Transformers. This is a way better movie than Transformers. Django Unchained, my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie. This movie's fucking awesome. Kicks ass with an iron boot. Um, if this... It's Quentin Tarantino as fuck. It's violent. It's got some great dialogue. Phenomenal action scenes. It's bloody as fuck. God, this is an awesome fucking movie. Why am I not a bigger Tarantino fan? I don't know. Uh, Dogura. This really should not have been directed by Ishiro Honda. He should have just let him... Toho should have just let him do his... Crime, drama, bullshit, whatever you wanted to do. Dog Soldiers, a pretty solid werewolf movie from the early 2000s. Uh, directed by the same guy who had gone to do The Descent, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, I think so. Um, not a bad film. It's got some really gnarly kills and some very violent and fucked up scenes. Um, I wish there would have been a sequel made. Uh, Doom 2005, I already reviewed this. I love the shit out of this movie. Doom Annihilation, and I talked about this last year with my Universal videos. Um, not a horrible film, and not a bad adaptation of Doom, but it's really held back by its low budget. Don't Breathe. Uh, directed by the same guy who did the 2013 Evil Dead. I have seen the trailer for Alien Romulus. I'm very interested and intrigued. Not so much with this movie. I did not really care for Don't Breathe. And I'm like, wow, they made a sequel to this movie? Haven't seen it. No, I'm not really all that interested. I didn't much care for Don't Breathe. Don't Tell Mom, The Babysitter's Dead. Uh, I love this movie. This is a great, like, uh, this is a great summer kids movie. Uh, excuse me. Um, apparently this is getting a remake uh, sometime soon. I'll check it out. Uh, Domino, pretty gnarly, fucked up action movie. Um, this is one of my mom's favorite movies, actually. Yeah, I like Domino. Deadstream, one of the best found footage films to come out in the last 10 years or so. I actually really, really like Deadstream um, and is hands down to uh, one of the best Shudder movies I've ever seen. This was a huge pleasant surprise. Um, Extinction, a fairly decent zombie movie. It's got some good gore and it's I got a really cool concept, but... Uh, as zombie movies tend to do, has a very bleak ending that kind of leaves a sour taste in my mouth. The Exorcist, um, not a bad film. Just not one of my favorites, but I rewatched it last year uh, to celebrate its 45th anniversary. and uh, Or no, its 50th anniversary, excuse me. Um, and yeah, it still holds up. Exit Wounds, one of my favorite Steven Seagal movies. Um, very entertaining. It's pretty violent and fucked up. E.T. I actually haven't seen E.T. since 2016. Um, but yeah, it's a classic. One of Spielberg's best. Uh, Escape Room. I mentioned this earlier. A good Stallone movie. And is I'm shocked it's taken th like it took this long for Arnold and Stallone to like co-star together in an action movie. Um, wait a minute. Oh, that's, that's this movie. No, excuse me. That's escape plan. This is escape room. The 2019 movie. That's low key. a saw ripoff. Um, 
What the fuck? Um, the first movie that me and Meadow saw in theaters of 2019, we liked it in the theater, but hasn't held up quite as well. Had a horrendous theater experience. There was some bitches that were sitting right below us that were recording jump scares with their phone and blasting us in the face with their fucking phones. And whenever there was a jump scare, they would go, oh, oh my God. Every time there was a jump scare and I wanted to, wanted to throttle those fucking hoes. <laughs> so excuse me, escape plan is the Stallone and Schwarzenegger co-star action movie. Yeah, it's good. Um, I just liked uh, Bullet to the Head more, but this was pretty entertaining. Um, the sequels are fucking dog shit garbage, especially the second movie. At least the third one has a decent final kill, but I did not like either of those sequels. Um, Eight-Legged Freaks, a fun early 2000s creature feature. It's got a good cast, a tiny-ass Scarlett Johansson. Um, but if you're afraid of spiders, you might want to run with this one. Enter the Dragon, Bruce Lee's best movie. Um, it's a shame that he died right after that film came out. But yeah, Enter the Dragon's a classic. Hold on. I gotta blow my nose again. I was, again, really hoping, because I find this annoying. <sighs> Ah, here's the other Tim Burton movie that I can't get Meadow to watch. Um, Ed Wood. I tried three times to get Meadow to watch Ed Wood. Even with Johnny Depp in it, she just couldn't do it. She kept checking out like halfway through. Same thing with Big Fish. That's got Ewan McGregor. She loves Ewan McGregor, but she's just like, nope, can't do it. But Ed Wood's a great movie. Um, probably in my top five list of... No. If I was to make a top ten, it'd probably be in that. Ed Wood's a great movie. There's just other Tim Burton films I like a little more. Uh, but yeah, Ed Wood's a great, great film. Feels like a nice kind of adjacent companion piece to the universal horror cycle. Uh, end of Watch. Uh, I don't think this was David Ayer's directorial debut, but it was one of his earlier films. This movie kicks ass. It's violent. It's fucked up. It's over the top as, as fuck. Uh, it's got some really good action scenes and really intense moments. And the chemistry between Michael Pena and Jake Gyllenhaal is really solid. Um, yeah, End of Watch is pretty good. It screams David Ayer. So, and I do want to check out more of David Ayer's movies. Fall, a, a movie from 2022. It's got a very simple concept. Two chicks stranded on top of a 2,000-foot-tall radio tower with no way down. If you're afraid of heights, you might want to avoid this movie. I'm a little afraid of heights. And uh, it's pretty intense, but it dra no, it doesn't drag. But by the end of it, you just want to be like, okay, just get the fuck off the goddamn tower, please. Fuck. How are they making a sequel to this movie? What? I mean, I'll check it out. The 05 Fantastic Four movie, which is obscenely underrated. I love the shit out of this movie. One of my favorite superhero films. Fido. A Romero-inspired Zomcom that's got intelligent zombies. It's got a decent cast. It's got some good effects and good kills. Um, not a great Zomcom by any means, but it's entertaining enough. The Fifth Element, a um, classic sci-fi movie from the late 90s. Uh, Bruce Willis is great. Mila Jovovich is great. Yeah, fun movie. Fist of Fury. Uh...
Not a great movie. It's got some good fight scenes. But this movie is very sad and very mean-spirited, in my opinion. Not very rewatchable. Like, I like Big Boss less than this movie. But I find this movie to be more unrewatchable than The Big Boss. Um, I know that's a, uh, that's a crime because this was a very popular movie in China for a long time. But yeah, nah, it's just not for me. The Fighter with uh, Christian Bale and Mark Wahlberg, pretty pretty good movie. It's not well, it is a boxing movie, but it's also kind of a prison movie too. But I like The Fighter. It's got some. Solid performances from both Bale and uh, Wahlberg. It's got one of the most satisfying girlfriend confronting angry mob mom scenes I've ever seen in a film. Very entertaining. Uh, Firestarter, the original from 1980. Four, maybe? Maybe 85? I don't quite remember. Um, not a bad film. Not a bad Stephen King movie. It's just not really... Didn't quite float my boat. Uh, the best scene is when Drew Barrymore goes on her pyrokinesis rampage at the very end. Um, but that's really about it. Uh, I did see the remake... Uh, early last year i thought it was awful um one of the worst movies of 2022 um i used to have it but as soon as i watched it i was just like garbage and that's how you know i, I really do not dig a movie unless it's part of a franchise um if i see a movie and i'm just really not liking it if it goes in the garbage that's like a negative 10 out of 10 for me Flesh Eater, uh, a very pretty low budget zombie movie from the late '80s. Um, that zombie here is Bill Hinsman from the uh, cemetery scene from the original Night of the Living Dead, uh, and this came out in 1988, 20 years after Night of the Living Dead. Um, it's not a bad movie. It's got some good kills. It's a, it's pretty gory, um, but it's got an incredibly repetitive soundtrack. And a bleak ending that I really, really did not care for. But this was made kind of like as a big homage to Night of the Living Dead. And it's also insanely low budget. This movie only cost 60 grand. And somehow, at times, looks cheaper than Night of the Living Dead. Well, I mean, it technically is cheaper. But it looks even more homemade than the original Night of the Living Dead. But I like Flesh Eater. I thought it was pretty entertaining. Uh, the Japanese cut of Frankenstein Conquers the World. The better cut of the two, in my opinion. Uh, one of my favorite both movies, Ishiro Honda movies, and monster movies of all time. Um, insanely underrated. Um, yeah, great movie. Fred Claus, one of my favorite uh, Christmas movies. I actually saw that in theaters. Uh, Vince Vaughn and Paul Giamatti have good chemistry. Um, yeah, love it. Very funny. Oh, my nose is starting to itch. <sighs> ah, excuse me. My nose is very sore. <laughs> Fuck, I'm all out of tissues. Balls. The Gallows. Wow, this was bad. Oh my God, one of the worst movies of 2015. God damn. Damn almighty, this was bad. Uh, there was a sequel, I think, in 2018, maybe? Uh, if my brother was here, he'd tell me down in the comments, because he's actually the one who made me aware that there was a Gallows sequel. Haven't seen it. <laughs> I think it came out around the same time as Unfriended Dark Web. Um, and I was like, 
wow, they made an unfriended sequel too. Like two shitty found footage horror movies that are getting sequels in the same year. But yeah. Whew, the gallows was bad. Gabriel Iglesias, I'm not fat, I'm fluffy special. Uh, I've been watching a lot of stand-up comedy stuff lately, and this still remains my favorite Gabriel Iglesias special, with the fluffy movie probably as a close second. Aloha Fluffy is pretty funny, too. But yeah, this one's hysterical. Gabriel Iglesias is really funny. Ah, remember the Matthew McConaughey movie that I said I have? Uh, well, this is it. Uh, Frailty from 2001. Uh, I wanted to check this out because, um, oops, um, Cody Leach made a video about the top 10 movie twists. Uh, and I think this was number one saying like the ending has like five different twists, one after the other. Uh, this is directed by Bill Paxton. I think it might've been his directorial debut, maybe, um, and it's got Matthew McConaughey in it. And he also is infamous for being very stinky. Uh, but Frailty was... It was okay. It, I, I, I appreciate the twists for what they are. But I think they didn't work quite as well for me. Because they're the kind of twists that... They're not bad. But they raise a lot of questions that the movie doesn't really answer. So by the end of it, I was just feeling a little more confused than shocked. But not a bad movie at all. Bill Paxton did a good job directing it. Um, the Fugitive with Harrison Ford. Hands down, Harrison Ford's best movie. And another movie that I try to get Meadow to watch, and she's just like, nope, can't do it. Which sucks. This is a great fucking movie. Uh, Freaky on Blu-ray, directed by Christopher Landon, the same guy that did the Happy Death Day movies. And it's kind of, sort of, in continuity with the Happy Death Day movies. Um, but it's not as good as the Happy Death Day movies. I was really excited for this movie. But w the best part of the film, obviously, is Vince Vaughn. But ironically... So as much as I love the Happy Death Day movies, something I've always thought about is if the Happy Death Day movies were R-rated, they'd be even better. Simply just because they can make the movies more violent and have the jokes be a lot more funny. Well, this movie is R-rated, but it's not even close to being as funny. Um, that's a shame. But it's not a bad movie by any means. Uh, I'd like to see a sequel, but that's unlikely. I'll I'll take a Happy Death Day 3 over a Freaky 2 any day. Fracture with Anthony Hopkins and Ryan Gosling. My first Ryan Gosling movie, I think. Not bad. It feels very much like Anthony Hopkins is channeling Hannibal Lecter for this movie. But... It was decent. Any movie with Anthony Hopkins in it is pretty good. Four Brothers. Uh, I got this for my birthday last year. It's a Mark Wahlberg. Um, not a gangster, but it's a ghetto hood rat action movie. I thought it was pretty entertaining. My brother would probably get a big kick out of it. Forrest Gump. Um, fantastic movie. Come on now. Of course. Happy 30th anniversary to Forrest Gump. The Foreigner. Uh, one of Jackie Chan's later movies. This came out in 2017. This came out when Jackie Chan was really trying to do different things other than just the martial arts comedy stooge that he's been for the last 40 years. Um, not a bad film, but it would have been more entertaining if not as many of the characters were so unlikable, including Jackie Chan, unfortunately. But not a bad film by any means. It's got a good cast, Jackie Chan and uh, Pierce Brosnan. Uh, 
Robin Williams' Flubber, one of my favorite Disney movies and one of my favorite uh, Robin Williams movies. Pretty funny. Oh, from Dust Till Dawn. I'm in the camp that says the second half of Dust Till Dawn is way better than the first half. But man, is this movie whack ass and over the top as fuck. Great special effects, great vampire kills. Very violent, very gory, and very fucked up. It's a shame that the uh, sequels couldn't have been better. The second one is bad. Bad, 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 bad. And the third one uh, works kind of as a prequel, but it's also pretty bad. Uh, Friday, one of uh, Meadow's favorite comfort films. I like it too. If you grew up in the hood, um, uh, you can definitely relate to this. I didn't exactly grow up in a hood, but, um, I grew up in a pretty not so desirable neighborhood. So I can relate to a lot of this stuff that is uh, shown in this movie. Definitely the uh, a lot of the yards being dead and brown during the summer, which I hate that look. It's so ugly. Um, Gattaca, a uh, sci-fi drama with Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman. Not a bad film. I watched this um, one time during school in my science class, actually. Um, I thought it was decent, but not a very rewatchable film. The chemistry between Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman is pretty good, though. Gemini Man, a uh, Will Smith action movie directed by Ang Lee. Um, I liked it. A lot of people had criticisms for the CGI, especially when Will Smith is playing two characters and some of it on the Will Smith clone is a little questionable. Mainly it's around the mouth. Like, what is it with mouths and CGI? Do they just not work or something? But it had some good action scenes, and it had a good twist at the end of it. So I thought it was pretty entertaining. My brother is a big fan of it. Uh, Genocide, War of the Insects, a uh, Shochiku sci-fi horror film. I can go the rest of my life without ever watching it again. Yeah. Genocyber, a five-part animated, or it's an OVA. Um, it's it's messed up. <laughs> um, but aside from one scene that really is very unnecessary, like why the hell is this even here? I'm not going to say what it is, but if people who have seen Genocyber surely know what I'm talking about. Outside of that, I actually don't think this is a bad series. Um, it, if you like ultra-violent anime, this is definitely like one of the top ten best of those ultra-violent animes. Uh, Jordan Peele's Get Out. Not as good as um, everyone says that it is. It's a good film, but I just didn't... I've seen it only twice. I really liked it the first time I saw it. But the second time I saw it, which was October of last year, I'm just like... This is kind of a watch once type movie, if you ask me. But it's not a bad film by any means. A good debut effort for Jordan Peele, though. Uh, the original Ghost Adventures documentary from 2004. This scared the crap out of me when I first saw it. Uh, I saw it around Christmas time on Netflix. And by the end of it, I had chills and goosebumps like crazy. Like, oh my god, this scared the crap out of me. The Ghost in the Darkness, 
Um, great killer lion movie. I think it's the greatest one of all time. Despite both of its leads, Val Kilmer and Michael Douglas being pretty miscast, they do do still a good job. Um, it's just for their type of characters, they're not the best fits. But it's it's violent, it's R-rated, intense, and suspenseful as fuck. The same guy who directed uh, Predator Two did this movie. Um, I'd say give it a I say give it a look. Ghosts of Mars, uh, John Carpenter movie, one of his last decent ones. I thought it was okay. It's got some good special effects and some good kills, but it, yeah, it's a Doom movie, straight up. It has a very similar ending that feels like a Doom movie. Instead of demons, it's ghosts. Uh, the first Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider movie, not a bad film, but is not a great superhero movie, in my opinion. Uh, but the, the sequel, uh, Spirit of Vengeance, is horrendous. The Giant Behemoth, I wasn't a fan of this movie. It feels like Diet Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Ironically, though, I, I think I liked it a little bit more than Gorgo, but not by a whole lot. Um, Ridley Scott's Gladiator. This is a great movie. Phenomenal film. Great music. Uh, great sets. Great action scenes. It's just a fantastic film. Glory, a really good Civil War movie with Matthew Broderick. Also quite violent. It's got a really good cast. Morgan Freeman and Denzel Washington. That's a good, that's a good one. Yeah. Goke, Body Snatcher from Hell, another Shochiku horror movie. Um, this one, it has an ending that has a bigger gut punch than The Mist. And it's probably as shocking. Uh, but outside of that, I'd say Goke, Body Snatcher from Hell is a pretty decent movie. Definitely, of the four sci-fi and horror films that Shochiku made, between 67 and 68. This is probably actually their best film. Uh, the Goonies. Classic. Come on now. Goonies is a great movie. Oh, speaking of which. Gorgo. Yeah, and I don't really like this movie very much. It's it's a slogging bore. Despite some decent effects. Uh, Gorillas in the Mist. Good movie. Though it's actually pretty sad and tragic. But it's based on a true story. So, yeah. Gorillas in the Mist. Great movie. Graveyard Shift, probably one of my least favorite Stephen King movies. It's got some decent gore and some decent special effects, but it's also just kind of a a bore and a snoozer. Um, and it feels more like an 80s generic creature feature rather than a Stephen King movie. And oddly, in this case, those two just don't mix. Uh, the Great Wall. I actually really like this movie. Uh, it's very colorful. It's very action-packed and pretty entertaining. I actually saw it in theaters in 3D. Which, now that I think about it, this was the very last movie that I've seen in 3D. Thus far. Uh. The Green Mile. Come on now. I already talked about this. Happy 25th anniversary. Gridiron Gang, one of my favorite uh, rock movies, uh, and one of my favorite football movies, too. I fucking hate football. It's There's four things that... He, there's five things that humanity has created that I think are the worst things that humanity has created. Money, religion, politics, um, I guess there's four, and football. Moving on. Uh, the Grudge. I've never seen any of the sequels. And I've never seen any of the original Japanese movies. I don't really want to. I'll check out uh, the American movies. But I'm not a big fan of J-horror. J-horror films tend to be extremely bleak. And not very fun to watch. So I think I'll pass. 
and the grudge is like the the top of the list for that. Uh, Mechanical Violator Hakaider. This is a tokusatsu film. Um, it's an inverse movie adaptation of Android Kikaider, the main antagonist of Kikaider being Hakaider is the good guy, and Kikaider is the bad guy. It's decent. It's got great effects and some fun fight scenes, but it's kind of a more, it's kind of dry in terms of story and it has a ambiguous cliffhanger ending that I don't like. Hancock, a movie that really should have been two movies. One about Will Smith, you know, um, fixing his public image as a superhero. And the second movie should have been him fighting his wife, but they took those and crammed them in the two movies or crammed them into one movie. And it just doesn't work. I like the first half way better than the second half. Uh, the Happy Time Murders. This is a shame that this movie flops so hard. I think this movie is hilarious. Uh, Melissa McCarthy in an R-rated Muppets movie. That sounds like a recipe like, like, like for a Nobel Prize. But it was a huge flop and critics hated it. I love it though. I think it's really funny. Oh my god, we're only halfway through. We have 10 more to go. Ooh. Okay. Um the heat Another Melissa McCarthy movie. Uh, Melissa McCarthy and Sandra Bullock as two polar opposite um, detectives. I liked it. It's got some good chemistry. Uh, this would have been a great pilot for a TV show, in my opinion. Yeah, I like The Heat. That was pretty funny. Pretty entertaining. Her with Joaquin Phoenix and Scarlett Johansson. A very well-made movie and a very good film. Minus an incredible incredibly cringy two of them actually two scenes of incredibly cringy phone sex no thanks but this is a good movie never in my life have i ever like slid down in a chair in order to hide during a scene in my life than the phone sex scene between both of them between Joaquin Phoenix and Scarlett Johansson. Oh. <laughs> um, the 2013, maybe? No, I think it was 2014. Uh, the Rock Hercules. I actually thought this was pretty entertaining. Um, I think this was the movie where The Rock like was pushing himself so hard that he passed out on set doing this movie. Um, I thought it was entertaining. It's got some good jokes and some pretty fun action scenes. I would have liked the sequel, but no assholes. Uh, the Hills Have Eyes remake from 2006. This movie kicks ass. It's violent. It's fucked up. It's intense. And it's gritty as fuck. Definitely way better than the original, in my opinion. Uh, the H-Man, a pretty uh, spooky, pretty entertaining and uh, fun late 50s Japanese sci-fi horror movie. Hobbs and Shaw, um, the only other installment of the Fast and Furious franchise that I've ever seen. I actually really liked it. Uh, Jason Statham and The Rock have really good chemistry and it's got some really great action scenes and the uh, Especially the final fight between Jason, The Rock, and Idris Elba. I really like Hobbs and Shaw. 
Hollow Man. Um, great movie. Paul, one of Paul Verhoeven's best films, and one of Kevin Bacon's best films too. And uh, Meadow actually really liked this movie when I first showed it to her. Um, so much so we've watched it three times together, and she's liked it more and more. Hook. I think this is one of Steven Spielberg's best movies, and one of Robin Williams' best movies too. Um, yeah, I really like Hook. I think it's it's funny. It's action packed. Um, it's well made. It's got great sets, um, and it feels like a good, um, like pseudo sequel to Peter Pan, the Disney version. Horns. I really, I still really like this movie, but it's just that damn ending that just ah. If the ending was better, this would be such a, a like a ten out of ten movie. Still, though, Horns is really good. Hot Fuzz, not as good as Shaun of the Dead, but. Still, Hot Fuzz is really entertaining. Um, I've never seen the third movie of the Cornetto trilogy. I think it was At World's End. That one has to do with aliens. Um, I've never seen it. I've heard very little about it. Howard the Duck um, from 1986, I think. This actually was pretty fun. It's weird and whack as fuck, but it's a good Howard the Duck movie. Uh... The 2003 Hulk movie, the Hulk scenes are entertaining as all live in hell. Sam Elliott does a great job as uh, General Ross, but why is this movie so damn bleak? Damn, this is a Hulk movie. Mm. Not as good as I remember it being, though. Uh, Humanoids from the Deep, uh, my favorite Roger Corman movie. I've seen very few, but of all the ones I've seen, this is the one I like the most. Uh, the closest to, aside from The Shape of Water, the closest to a Creature from the Black Lagoon movie remake that we'll ever get. And in some ways, Humanoids from the Deep is more entertaining. Uh, the Hunt, a pretty fun action thriller movie from 2020. Um, it's got some, uh, it's got a couple decent jokes and some fun action scenes. Yeah, I like this. Uh, I am legend. This movie makes me ball my fucking eyes out every time I see it. When it, when, uh, Samantha, the German shepherd dies, I'm just like, <laughs> um, still a decent movie. Uh, I think I'll check out that sequel if slash when it comes out um, with Michael B. Jordan, uh, and it'll it'll canonize the alternate ending of this movie. This is the theatrical or this is the theatrical cut that I have here. Ice Age, uh, one of my favorite Blue Sky movies. This at one point was my favorite movie of all time. Uh, I've seen the first two sequels. Uh, I liked Dawn of the Dinosaurs a lot. Uh, the Meltdown, I think that's what it was called, the second movie. I thought it was just kind of okay. And uh, I've never seen anything else in the Ice Age franchise. IMAX Deep Sea and IMAX Under the Sea. IMAX Deep Sea, I really like. It's beautifully shot. It's got very nice uh, music by Danny Elfman. It's got a great narration by Kate Winslet and Johnny Depp. Um, this is a very nice, like if you just want to sit back and watch 40 minutes of underwater footage with Johnny Depp ASMR, you'll dig the shit out of this. IMAX Under the Sea on Blu-ray, uh, narrated by Jim Carrey. Not as good as IMAX Deep Sea. Um, it's, it's also well shot, but it's so rushed. They're both about 40 minutes a piece, but... This one has a nice pace to it. This one feels rushed as fuck. So my short-lived interest in underwater documentaries ended with this. Because I had just watched Blue Planet 1 and 2 uh, before this. So I was in the mood for something more, but this kind of killed it. Independence Day, a great classic uh, 90s sci-fi action movie with Will Smith. Interview with the Vampire, a great, great movie. I've never seen the show. I've heard it's decent, but I just haven't gotten around to seeing it. But, uh, yeah, Interview with the Vampire is a great, great movie. 
The Invisible Man from 2020. This is also a great movie. Well made. Very entertaining. Very suspenseful. I, Robot. Probably my favorite solo Will Smith movie. Outside the Bad Boys trilogy. This is an awesome fucking flick. The Iron Giant. Brad Bird, give us a fucking sequel, you troll. Fuck you. The Iron Giant's great, but it's because of that ending. I I boycott watching this until he gives us a sequel. Well, maybe after he dies, Warner Brothers will just be like, okay, let's make a sequel now. He's dead. To which case, I kind of low-key support. Oh, excuse me, guys. I'm, I got to sneeze. Okay. Uh, it Stains the Sands Red. Low-key, one of my favorite zombie movies. Um, not a very rewatchable one, but it is still very entertaining. It's well-made. It's tense and suspenseful. I really dig this movie. Oh, my God. We still have eight more to go. <laughs> Uh, Jiu-Jitsu, a Nicolas Cage sci-fi martial arts movie. He's only in it for like 20 minutes. Uh, that cost $25 million. I'm sure a lot of that went to Nicolas Cage's paycheck, though. I liked it, though. I thought it was entertaining. Uh, watched it once, only when uh, back when Roman was born. I thought it was all right. Although, I said this before. Ironically, in a martial arts movie called Jiu-Jitsu... There's not a whole lot of use of the martial art jujitsu. It's mostly kickboxing. Uh, Joker 2019. Fucking masterpiece movie. Need I say more. Uh, still holds up. Um, I do look forward to Joker Voli Adu coming out later this year. Hopefully it's at least as good as this movie. The one thing I ask is that it's R-rated. I don't care what they do. Uh, I'm I'm open for new things. Uh, Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn is great. But yeah, the one thing I ask is that it's still R-rated. The Sylvester Stallone Judge Dredd movie, not great. Uh, there's some decent action scenes, but... I hate to say this, but I kind of think Stallone was miscast. But hands down, the worst thing about this movie is Rob Schneider. God, he throws the tone off in this movie way too much. He sticks out like a sore thumb. I get that they threw him in just for comedic, comedic relief, but Judge Dredd is something that doesn't need comedic relief. I just want to watch Judge Dredd be a badass, ass-kicking cop. And then you have Rob Schneider here, and it steals his thunder. Like, nah, nah, miss me with that shit. Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. I have seen the original Jumanji. It's good, but I like this one way more. I haven't seen the third one, uh, The Next Level, I think it's called. But I heard it was not as good as this one. Kikaider Reboot. Uh, this is... Um, that's Hawkeider, and this here is Keykiter. I did not dig this movie very much. Um, believe it or not, the fight scenes go on for way too long, and it's just kind of sad, bleak, and pointless. Uh, King Arthur, Legend of the Sword, not a great movie in my opinion. It had decent fight scenes, but it was just kind of meh. How the hell are they trying to make a cinematic universe out of this movie? Crawl, one of the one of the biggest misuses of Liam Neeson I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but outside of that, it's essentially medieval fantasy Star Wars. Not bad, and certainly more unique. I see why this movie has a cult following, and also the the weapon that you see here, the glaive, is miserably mis mis uh not misused, but it's it's fuck. It's miserably underused, uh, in my opinion. I think the main character uses this to kill things like twice. 
Um, but yeah, not a bad movie. It's just kind of okay. Kung Fu Killer, a Donnie Yen martial arts movie about him finding a killer that kills people with Kung Fu. Um, not bad. Um, it's got some good fight scenes. Kwai Dan, a three hour long Japanese anthology horror film. Uh, this is the only film by Masaki Kobayashi that I've ever seen. Damn solid movie. Um, it's very steeped in Japanese folklore. So a lot of that kind of goes over my head, but very well made. It's very vibrant and colorful, very spooky at times. And it oozes Japanese culture. So if you're into that, you'll probably really dig this movie. Labyrinth. Classic from the 80s. I love this movie. Amazing special effects and great music. David Bowie, man. Lake Placid. Um, classic 90s. Or was it 90s? Yeah, 1999. Uh, yeah, late 90s creature feature. It's really funny. It's got some good lines, especially from Betty White. Um, the Lair, a Shudder movie that also didn't suck. It's a, also done by the same guy that did The Descent. And it kind of has a similar look and vibe in, uh, instead of crawling humanoid gargoyles. It's just monsters. But it was fun. It's fairly gory and entertaining. Another Shudder movie that doesn't suck. Ah. The Last Samurai. I fucking love this movie. This is a masterpiece. Uh, probably my favorite Tom, Tom Cruise movie. Not a big fan of Tom Cruise, but he is fantastic in this movie. Um, also very steeped in Japanese culture. I do not understand the hate that this movie gets. The Last Stand, one of my favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. I think this is very underrated. It's a shame it didn't do better because I think this could have also gotten a sequel or two. But yeah, it was a nice uh, soft return for Arnold to return back to acting. Uh, Latitude Zero, both the American and Japanese cuts. If I had to pick, I'd probably go for the American cut because it's longer. Not a bad film. It's... 60s cheese as fuck. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I actually really like this movie. I think it's a really solid action flick. It's a shame it bombed and um, critics bashed it so badly that it forced Sean Connery into retirement. But I think if he had to go out, he did go out swinging, literally. Legend, I know Jackie Boy loves this movie, but I'm just, I mean, the effects are good and the fantasy setting is kind of cool, but I did not love this movie as a lot of other people do. I did watch the, I watched all three cuts. The theatrical cut sucks. The alternate cut is a bit better and the director's cut is the best of three. But yeah, Legend just, yeah, I didn't really dig Legend very much. Okay, never mind. Uh, Leviathan, of those 1989 underwater horror movies, this was the best, uh, in my opinion. This, it is Alien slash The Thing, just underwater. But that still works for me. Uh, great special effects. Peter Weller's pretty good in it. It's got a great cast. Uh, there's also Richard Crenna and uh, Ernie Hudson. Although his death was bullshit. Um, yeah, I love Le Le Leviathan. I think it's a pretty solid movie. Little Shop of Horrors. Um, this is the theatrical cut. This did not hold up nearly as well as I remembered. I thought there was more plot than musical than there was in this movie, but there's not. It's mostly a musical, and I'm not a big fan of musicals. The Long Kiss Goodnight, a great, um, a great action movie by Rennie Harlan. Even Meadow liked this movie, right, hon? 
The long kiss, good night. That's a duck, not a dick. <laughs> um, the Longest Yard, one of my favorite Adam Sandler movies. Uh, it's really, really funny. I've never seen the original, but still, I think this movie's really funny. It's got some good jokes. Uh, and another football movie that I really like. Again, I hate football, but I do like football movies. As soon as I brought home those fries, you fell asleep. <laughs> I'm not surprised, though. Uh, Love and Monsters. Um, hello, Jason Bender from Wisconsin. Uh, this is a big, pleasant surprise. Um, during the desperate times of 2020, this was one of the few bright spots. Um, yeah, I like this movie a lot. Minus the ending, which I really did not care for but outside of that like the first three quarters of it are pretty solid so i could just kind of ignore the ending and league of super pets not as good as it should have been it's got a great voice cast but it's not as entertaining as it should be sadly The lake was awful. Thailand's first giant monster movie. Giant monster movie. And it's fucking terrible. The plot is not even paper thin. It's single cell amoeba thin. All of the characters are blank slates. The monster does nothing except just stomp around and roar the whole time. And it has a, the whole movie is just incomprehensible. Terrible fucking movie. Thailand, don't make any more monster movies. Uh, Ma from 2019. I like Octavia Spencer, but outside of that, this movie was just kind of dry. Mad Bull 34, a hilarious Violent, fucked up, over the top OVA. I love Mad Bull 34. It's kind of poorly made, but that's part of its charm. I highly recommend Mad Bull 34. Maggie, a Arnold Schwarzenegger zombie movie with Abigail Breslin. It's not as good as it should be, sadly. It's a bit too bleak for my tastes. Man on Fire, a Denzel Washington action thriller directed by Tony Scott. It's the the one thing about this movie that killed it for me was the ending. Because Denzel Washington and Dakota Johnson have really good chemistry, but the fact that he dies kind of ruins the movie for me. Spoilers. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, the Kenneth Branagh movie. I really dig this movie. This is a way better film than Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula. Um, probably the most accurate uh, adaptation of the novel. Uh, Kenneth Branagh does a great job as Victor Frankenstein. And Robert De Niro, shockingly, in a very strange turn of events, is fantastic as the monster. I dig the shit out of this movie. It's also very violent. And yes, I will check out both Guillermo del Toro's Frankenstein and Maggie Gyllenhaal's The Bride of Frankenstein. Jim Carrey's The Mask. Meadow did not like Jim Carrey's The Mask. Shame. But I love The Mask. It's one of my favorite films of all time. It's a hilarious movie. Common Rider the First. Decent tokusatsu flick. It's got some great, great fight scenes and good special effects. Men in Black, the only one of the Men in Black series I like is the first movie. Not to sound like one of those gatekeeping assholes, but it's just, just the only one that's resonated with me. Misery, I just watched this a couple days ago, actually. It's a phenomenal film. Maybe I'll watch it again. The Mist, I already talked about this too. Phenomenal movie. 
and Mile 22, kind of a generic Mark Wahlberg action thriller. It's got one really good fight scene with Eco Uwise, but has kind of an incomprehensible, confusing ending that I didn't really care for. But it was an entertaining movie still. Ah, the 2008 Mirrors remake. I actually still have not seen this movie. I just now realized. I've owned it for like two years, but I still haven't seen it. I have to rectify that pretty soon. The 1950s Moby Dick movie with Gregory Peck. Gregory Peck's Moby Dick. That's not flattering. <laughs> Huh, what are you doing in there? What are you doing in there? What? Are you cooking something? Yeah, for my mom. Oh. Okay. I'm going to make her dinner um, after I give her the stuff I'm making here. I'm going to grab her baby and I'm going to come back and then I'll make her dinner. Okay. I'm almost done. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Moby Dick, not a bad movie. It's a kind of a monster movie a little bit. Um, a good ad adaptation of the book, which I have read. Mortal Kombat, Scorpion's Revenge, the first animated R-rated Mortal Kombat movie. It was entertaining. I think there's now like four of these movies. I haven't seen either of them, uh, but I like this one enough. Mortal Kombat 2021, pretty entertaining as fuck movie. Uh, it's got great fight scenes. It does live up to its R rating, and is a it's a pretty entertaining Mortal Kombat movie. Mosquito from the mid '90s, a fun mid '90s uh, creature feature. I watched this for my on my 19th birthday uh, with my brother and my friend Grayson. We all really liked it. Matango, um, good. Ishiro Honda, not very rewatchable um, Toho horror film. Mazinger Z Infinity, a pretty uh, entertaining uh, anime sequel movie to Mazinger Z. It's got great animation and great fight scenes. Uh, the Mysterians, uh, Toho's first uh, alien movie. I thought it was good. It's not very rewatchable, but uh, it's just kind of meh. Mutant, Roger Corman's Mutant, is terrible. This is the extended version of Forbidden World, I think it's called. And it sucks. It's damn near unwatchable at times. Muay Thai Warrior, or Muay Thai Samurai, as I call it. Pretty entertaining. It's got some great fight scenes and good choreography. Uh, it's quite violent, too. Uh, the Tom Cruise Mummy. Talk about a complete misfire. Uh, the original Mothra. It's a decent early 60s monster movie. Okay, we got four left. Oh, oh man. Hold on. Ugh. Morbius. Man, I wanted to like this movie more, but fucking A. Nah, this just did not do it for me. No, uh-uh. Should have been way, way, way better. Monster Hunter. I actually really like Monster Hunter. It's got... I've never played any of the Monster Hunter games, but... If you like Paul W.S. Anderson movies, this movie's pretty entertaining. It's got amazing special effects, cool monster designs, some good chemistry with Tony Jaa and Mila Jovovich, and a Ron Perlman cameo. I didn't like the abrupt ending, though. But, yeah, Monster Hunter was fun. Monster House is also pretty entertaining. It's a good, like, kids monster movie. But, uh, yeah, I like it. It's got some sort of dated animation, but it is still entertaining. Most Wanted, a good Keenan Ivory Wayans action movie with John Voight. Pretty fun. Uh, Nacho Libre. 
is not held up as good because man, those kids in this movie looked abused as fuck. But it's still funny. National Treasure, a great Nicolas Cage action adventure movie. Very entertaining. Very well made. It's actually my introduction to Nicolas Cage. Tom Savini's Night of the Living Dead. Really like this movie. I reviewed it. Uh, the 30th anniversary, the 30th anniversary edition of Night of the Living Dead. A good concept, but is not as well executed, sadly. Night of the Animated Dead, a shortened, abridged, animated adaptation of Night of the Living Dead, which has decent animation, but would be better if it did more original stuff and wasn't only an hour and 11 minutes long. Fuck! And Night of the Living Dead, Darkest Dawn, another animated adaptation of Night of the Living Dead that has a good voice cast. Like Tony Todd comes back to voice Ben and uh, Daniel Harris voices Barbara. but And uh, Joe Palato voices um, Harry Cooper, but also has... This, this one's got very terrible animation, but it's got a good voice cast, but... Again, another fucking bleak ending that I didn't like. Uh, Never Back Down, one of my favorite martial arts movies, despite Amber Heard being in it. She's actually quite tolerable in this movie. Uh, yeah, I love this movie. It's got great fight scenes. The Never Ending Story, um, classic 80s creature feature. Don't break it. Um, Your Next, a great home invasion movie. I'm not a big fan of home invasion films, but this one's very entertaining. It's got some gnarly as fuck kills and uh, some pretty entertaining action scenes. Uh, Zathura, a pretty fun space movie that I think is better than all of the Jumanji movies rolled into one. Uh, Ninja Assassin, um, great action movie, great martial arts movie. It's violent and over the top as fuck, and I love it. Uh, nope. I like it more than Get Out, but it's not quite as strong as it should be. But it has moments that are pretty good. It has some moments of good suspense. Uh, the Northmen. I did not care for this movie. Robert Eggers just doesn't do it for me. His his movies are just not not my style. But it has a good cast though, and some pretty good violent moments. Uh, the Odyssey, the two part miniseries. That's an adaptation of the Odyssey. I I love this movie. Saw it when I was in high school, but uh, I was like, ooh, I gotta have this. Um. On Deadly Ground and Fire Down Below, a double feature of Steven Seagal action movies that ironically both have like heavy save the earth preachy um, messages in them, but both entertaining action movies still. One Shot, uh, a military action movie that the whole film is done, or at least it's presented as being in one take. There probably are moments where you can tell that the film was like it tries to hide cuts but it does pretty seamlessly do the whole movie in just one take and there's a sequel coming out called one more shot which i'll check out uh orca the killer whale again jaws inspired but is still enough of its own original movie to be its own thing and Orochi, the A-Headed Dragon, this is a bootleg that I got for my birthday last year. It's actually a Blu-ray. Um, not bad. It's got good special effects, but um, it's essentially Japanese Clash of the Titans. Again, not bad, but just kind of eh. For Toho's 40th anniversary, or at least 
that being the more focused on film for Godzilla's 40th anniversary, it's a shame that it's just so mediocre. Another Steven Seagal action movie, Out for Justice. Um, I love this movie. It's probably Seagal's most violent film, aside from maybe Belly of the Beast. Um, yeah, I really like this. And The Pacifier with Vin Diesel, a very underrated Disney movie. It's it's really funny. It's got some fun action scenes. Um, yeah, this is entertaining as fuck. That was my favorite shirt. Now it's ruined with mustard. <laughs> uh, Jodie Foster's Panic Room. I actually really like this. This is a good cat and mouse thriller. Um, the Patriot. Uh, Roland Emmerich's best movie. No. It's either this or um, Day After Tomorrow. It's really a toss-up. Um, but The Patriot's a phenomenal movie. Violent as fuck. Have you noticed that I like a lot of movies that are very violent? Uh, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, a good coming-of-age uh, kids movie. Not really a kids movie. There's some dark shit that happened. But yeah, I love this movie. The 2019 Pet Cemetery remake. Say it with me, hun. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, it is ass. I'm so glad we did not see this in theaters. Fucking A, this was bad. Planet Terror, a kick-ass uh, zombie movie by Robert Rodriguez. Prey, a fun killer lion movie that is almost as good as Ghost in the Darkness. Uh, the Protector, a kick-ass Tony Jaa martial arts movie. It's got some amazing fight scenes. Uh, the Dolph Lundgren Punisher movie from 1989. It's okay, but it's not a. It's more an 80s action movie than it is a Punisher movie. It's okay, although it sucks that the that the Punisher doesn't have the white skull symbol. The Thomas Jane Punisher movie from 2004 or 5, not great in my opinion. It's very, it may be like a good origin story for the Punisher, and it has a decent cast, but it's very dry. Like, it's not as violent as it should be. It's not as entertaining or over the top as it should be. It's just kind of restrained and, once again, dry. Punisher Warzone, on the other hand, is not dry. This is a very, very violent, very fucked up, very visceral, messed up, R-rated movie. Aside from the John Bernthal series, this is the best Punisher. My nose is really starting to itch. And of my entire movie collection, this is the only film that is in the Q section. Fuck. The skin of my nose is starting to flake, and it's really itchy. The Quick and the Dead, directed by Sam Raimi. Very underrated movie in Sam Raimi's filmography. This is a pretty entertaining Western. I'm not a big fan of Westerns, but this has a really good cast. Uh, there's Tobin Bell, um, Leonardo DiCaprio, Russell Crowe, and Gene Hackman doing what Gene Hackman does best. Be an asshole. I like this movie. Rampage. I'm not very happy with my Rampage review from last year, but I still love Rampage the movie. Kick-ass monster movie. And finally, we are on our last box here. Racing Stripes, a uh, funny animal comedy. It's got a good voice cast. It's got some good fart jokes that had me rolling as a kid. Rise of the Legend, a uh, period piece martial arts movie um, that has really good fight scenes, but is 40 minutes way too long. It's two hours and 40 minutes. I was like, God damn, this movie does not need to be that long. Roadhouse. Uh, I love Roadhouse. It's 
cheesy and 80s and campy as fuck, but it's got good fight scenes. It's got a great soundtrack. I dig the shit out of Roadhouse. I will check out that remake with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Robots, classic animated uh, movie from the early 2000s. Rodan, a uh, classic kaiju film from the 50s. The Rundown, one of my favorite of The Rock's movies. It's got incredible action scenes and incredible soundtrack. It's early 2000s as all living fuck. And it's also really funny. Uh, this is a kick-ass movie. It's a shame we never got a sequel. Uh, the Running Man. I, I did not dig this movie very much. RV, kind of a more generic Robin Williams comedy, but it, it had its moments that were pretty funny, especially the, the septic tank explosion. Holy fuck. <laughs> uh, Renfield, I dug the fuck out of this movie. This might be my favorite movie of 2023. More on that in a future Super Cinema Rank episode. The Revenant, after years of hearing praise about this movie, I finally broke down and checked it out. This is a fantastic film. It's very violent, very gritty, very visceral and messed up. And Leo DiCaprio goes through a lot of hell in this movie. But, man, is this a great film. Sabotage, another David Ayer movie. Again, kind of suffers from Suicide Squad Syndrome and that it's obvious it's missing a lot of footage, but at least this movie is still R-rated. And it has an ambiguous, kind of more fucked up ending that I'm not a big fan of, but um, still, I like Sabotage. One of Arnold's more underrated movies. And the only other movie that I've seen by Masaki Kobayashi, I was wrong, is uh, Samurai Rebellion. I had a very brief classic 60s samurai binge where i wanted to get my hands on a lot of those and uh i i used to have three outlaw samurai too but i didn't much care for that movie um but samurai rebellion is another one of masaki kobayashi's wow. most famous films and i thought it was okay it's, again it's got another bleak ending which Kobayashi films tend to have very bleak endings, and that didn't leave a great taste in my mouth, so I was just like, eh, I think I'll stop there. So that'll about do it. Um, that was my entire selection of, well, actually, no, not my entire selection. There's more to come, but that was my last of my shelves i uh, i'll have probably one more video in this series where i go through some stuff that i've acquired recently uh a couple more tv shows and some other miscellaneous items but uh thank you very much for watching i apologize for the length of this video um push the comments down below let me know what you think hit the like button and hit the subscribe button and share this video with your friends and as always, go out, watch some movies, uh, enjoy yourselves, and I will see you guys in the next video.